You know, if these motherfuckers find it difficult to coexist with us, why don't they go back to England and the Netherlands? Fuck these motherfuckers, man. Sorry, guys. I'm canceling the play. I don't have to do such a story, such a play. Fuck these motherfuckers, man. Fuck them. Fuck white people. My real life is very, uh, 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 um, how should I say it? I, I want to say dull, but yeah. And, uh, and, and what, what I do sometimes, I, I simply fantasize about how this dull life can have a, a beautiful artistic form, you know? He's crazy in a sense, you know, because he's really like passionate about his work and and he, he really loves what he do. I think that's the most important thing that he might be just an agent of of of, of the truth, you know. Uh, he's an observer. He writes what he sees, and then yeah. With with Paul, you should expect anything, you know. Uh, when I say anything, I mean anything. There is a belief that when you crawl on your feet like you, you don't crawl the way other babies do. It's, it's a very unusual way of babies crawling. And my father made us believe that he was going to be a very a champion, a brilliant boy. So um, as, as we see him grow and watch him grow, and he grows into exactly what my father said he was going to be. Is is. <laughs> Is, is, is quite reserved, in fact, for, for, for one to understand him, you really have to come close to him because uh, he doesn't talk much. Paul Paul was the kind of person that, that uh, I knew that this was a gem and, and you kind of needed to, to, to protect him and nurture him, but give him the opportunity, you know, because he's not afraid, he's fearless. where I grew up and uh, um, there used to be a lot of cars here, a lot of scrap cars. My grandfather had a lot of scrap cars. Up there there used to be a big hole of these and you couldn't, you couldn't get them out. And we, as kids we used to get stung a lot. So <laughs> by bees. And here is the kitchen area. And the most interesting thing about this house is that uh, our grandmother, uh, when, when it was being built, used to hire people as individuals instead of a whole company. So we used to help those individuals. So we used to lay bricks ourselves. Anyway, uh, uh, so anyway, this is the kitchen. There used to be a coal stove here. Uh, it's no longer there because there was no electricity at the time. And when, we, when electricity came, the stove came. But my grandmother, used to refuse us to use the stove. Felt we, are, we shouldn't be lazy, we should make coal and, and make fire. So, uh, 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 but now it looks like this is the only stove that's being used. <laughs> and in here, this is the table where I used to write. I used to write on this table. You know, um, my scripts and everything. This whole room used to be full of pages. Uh, and then this used, I used to get into a lot of, uh, to be reprimanded a lot for that, you know, because there was a whole lot of papers and everything. And so the, uh, there, the, the, I don't know if you can see this, 
But there used to be a fence there, it wasn't anything. So I used to like writing here because you could also see stuff and you would see stuff. At one point I remember looking like, looking through here, writing at night, I saw a car being hijacked uh, out there, you know, and it was a truck though, and the guys were like, it was the first time I saw a hijack. So it was very interesting because they were running around taking the guy off because they had hijacked him somewhere else. They were unloading him here. So anyway. I applied to Gramstown, to the main festival, to try and do a, an interracial play because I had long wanted to do an interracial story, you know, on theatre. When we started rehearsing, we had a huge problem of finding the proper cast for the, for the whole thing. And we had a huge, huge problem. Oh, and initially there was a, a white woman who, who wanted to write this with me, you know, but as we met, I realized she, was, she had not written theater, and, and so I became sort of apprehensive because I, I was also scared myself of tackling uh, 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 this play after I had done Relativity, after I had done Cards, you know, and I, I felt that, you know, I didn't want uh, uh, to fail on it, you know. So I asked uh, uh, Obris Kami to write it with me, and we started writing it together. You come here, we have the structure uh, and, 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 and huge analysis that I'm, 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 I'm looking at, at, at writing, uh, and, and, and I say, oh, okay, I'll write this scene, I'll write that scene, I'll write that scene. So we started writing like that. So I would go write certain scenes, I would give it to him, I'll say, do whatever you want to do with those scenes. He'd write scenes, I would look at them, I would change you know, uh, whatever I want to do. Sometimes I think, why oh, did you write this thing? You crazy. He said, hell no, I did not write this thing. You're the crazy one. So we have that. But then the collaboration between Paul and I has always been in a sense that we would, try, would use one PC. So we'd sit together in a room in, in my study or in his, in his study. Uh, he, would, he would write to us, I'm reading something or, or, or Googling through the net and all that. And he would write and I'd read and I'd change stuff. But we sort of always know the, the end result. As we rehearsed, we are not even finished writing it, so I kept on improvising some scenes with the actors. We came up with some beautiful scenes from improv, you know. But because of our casting problem, because we couldn't find white actors, I came to Obru one day and said, you know, I have an idea of doing this as a, as a, you know, with black actors playing the white roles. And, and I thought he was going to argue with me and dissuade me from that, but and he said, oh, no, that's interesting. They're not trying it out. Then we tried it out in the rehearsal. Hey. What is it to you if I live or die, eh? Hey? I mean, white people never care whether someone like me lives or dies. You mean someone black? Yes. You don't look so black to me. Uh, I'll take white, you take black. <laughs> Your move. I grew up, I would say, pretty, I went to school with white, white students. So, um, we, I think, you know, we, we interacted so much. So it was almost like from there on up until now, we, you know, we're always in constant interaction <coughs> with white people. So uh, at the end of the day, it's it's mainly the accent and certain mannerisms, but it, yeah, it's just... That's the word, mannerism. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and, 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 and basically, it's just, it's just about finding a true human being. And then you just give them those extra mannerisms and then the accent and... 
it's nice, you know, to become somebody that you know, but that's what actors do, you know, you become a doctor without qualification. So I guess <laughs> I can become white on a black skin. Uh, whites are like blacks. There are those who are bad, there are those who are good. That's why we have enemies and we have friends. I, I play the frustrated director who's trying to put up a production where uh, he initially intended to have white characters in the play. So he struggled to get some, and then he wanted to use his black actors to assume roles of, of, of white people. So uh, the frustration as he goes on with the play is that the realization that it should have worked more if, if it had white people. So he's yeah, frustrated and angry, and angry with the whole white community at the end. Who's that baby? Oh, hi honey. So, how much? For you, only a hundred bucks. I will. A hundred? Mm -hmm. You are in your weight. What was that? Oh, my baby. A hundred is too much. I only have 30 pounds. Oh, no, 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 sweet chops. A hundred. Take it or fuck off. Ah, come on, come on, sweetheart, man. Ah, 30 bucks is all I have. I'm on. Okay. Look, I'll swallow my pride and give you a discount. Sure, 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 son. 80 bucks. Yeah? yeah. Look for 50, add it to what you have, and then we can talk. Huh? 80 bucks? Mm -hmm. And you call it a discount? Well, this is premium white pussy, dear, and you weren't getting it for 30 bucks. The other thing that is a nice release is when, this is why I like Riazal beyond, I mean, more than performance. I like Riazal soft plays a lot because also they are a sort of relief because then you can get an actor to do something, almost like leave a certain thing for you. It's, and, and, and it's thrilling for me. And, and even the whole process of getting that, it's almost like playing God. It's, it's, uh, it's very arrogant in itself, and, and I like it. Uh, it's, I get gratification out of it. Hi, welcome to my flat. Alfred Brown, coming through. And this is where I do. Uh, I watch all my movies, and sometimes I sleep here, though. As you can see, there's a pillow. Uh, I don't sleep on the bed, but I watch a lot of. I mean, I play a lot of PlayStation games. And uh, so, as you can see, the, some of them, Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, Stories, San Andreas, Hitman 2, all of them, God of War 1 and 2 over here. And then there's some very serious mini series and TV things. I've got Sopranos, I've got Rome, this is the kind of stuff I like to watch. I've got Homicide, I've got 24. And films, I like films, especially when they are done by great directors. Like this one is Rachel Scott, Alien. And I like the special features. There's a lot of movies that I watch. Uh, uh, this is broken. This. I'm going to have to fix this thing, and I want to take it into my bedroom so that uh, when I watch TV, there I sit there. Here, this is my study. I do all the writing here. And the reason I'm, I make it face this way instead of that is that if there's anybody in the house, a lot of actors come come here, they sleep over sometimes. So when it's facing them, every time they come, they stand over me and watch me as I write. So as I'm sitting like this here, yeah, I can always tell them, oh, stay right there. And whatever nobody will see is what I write because I find it very embarrassing as I write it. So I like the fact that you can see everything that comes in, comes out. It's a nice view from there. Anyway, and here is my bedroom. It's a lot messy. I'm a very messy person. So then there's the other TV and the DVD. 
So, and this is where I watch all my foreign language thing is uh, Wings of Desire, Weekend, John Luke Goddard, uh, Close Up, uh, Kiarostami, I think is, and uh, Bergman, Persona, uh, Kislowski, Decalogue, uh, Russian Arc. This is very nice. This all one shot. <laughs> It's very nice, but there's a lot of them here. I love Fellini, so there's La Strada there. But it's a very nice collection that I have. And so, but I spend hardly any time here except when I watch movies. I don't like being in the bedroom. So, I don't have much of it. So, it's quite a mess. It's just these clothes, you know, like, you know, shitty clothes that, you know. A uh, theater director would wear, so there's basically nothing. Yeah, I put all the clothes I don't need anymore. I'm gonna use them on plays someday. These shoes, I don't need them anymore. They're gonna be in the plays one day when I act as costume or something. So I put them there. And here, the girlfriend left her clothes here. She, she was washing them last night. We had a fight. But, um, just washing them last night, and then here is the kitchen. So I've got red wine, very cheap red wine, uh, 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 over there. Yeah? So I drink that when I want to drink. And class was here last night, was drinking all these elegance. So <laughs> yeah, that's basically it. I don't cook very much, so I have stuff that I can do instant like food with. You know, fast food, like beans and whatever, I use them with eggs. Then if you come through, then you can see inside the fridge. You see, this is, oh, there's another one. I had bought it for my girlfriend, the wine. But anyway, she's not here to drink it. So, but uh, this is what I eat mostly, Viennas and stuff, and um, Polonis in there, you know. And then there's a coke in there. So it's not much of a uh, very high class fridge. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I think that's basically it. There yeah, are cornflakes there, milk. I was told that my mother left me uh, when I was nine months old. Uh, the, she left me with her relatives. So the relatives have become my family. This is the family that I know. So I don't know my real close uh, family. So, and I was told that uh, she left me and ran away and never came back, whatever. So I, was, I only knew her name. So, and as, as, as I grew up, there are certain things, there are certain rules that uh, my grandparents had uh, uh, um, when she left me uh, that I think were very strange, you know, almost draconian in, 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 in themselves because the, like I wasn't allowed to play outside the yard as, as growing up, you know, and that has a negative effect on somebody because then you don't know how to relate, you don't know how to talk to girls because you know you, you've never been around your peers or at that critical age when you have to. The mother left Mpumelolo here or Paul as you know him here because he trusted that he was going to be in good hands because she trusted that Umam uh, Kulu and Dutatum Kulu okay, because the mother is our second cousin. And, she trusted that we would take care of, of him. And that was wonderful. That was a wonderful opportunity. But unfortunately, maybe Paul does not see it that way. At the time, I, I also felt that they wanted me to become something like a doctor or whatever, uh, 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 um, almost as a form of status or something which I didn't really uh, uh, believe in. I, I was a bit anti-people even at that time. So 
some of what he writes about shocks me because as, as an introvert head um, young man I thought he was going to go into some other thing some other you know careers which are not necessarily writing I never thought he would be a writer For, for, for me personally, I think I, 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 I classify what I, how, how I grew up as, as, as quite unpleasant, you know. And so uh, at the time I also needed an escape from it, you know, and probably this is why I fell into movies. Cause I remember when I started watching movies, I would really, go, I would, even the most terrible movie, I would forget. I would fall into that world, you know. I, I, I loved uh, Steven Seagal films very much. And uh, it was a, th a way of losing myself into that world because my own life was quite unpleasant. And not only because of how I, 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 I was raised in, uh, by people at home, but also even by the... I think that also was the... the the effect of being how, how I was raised by parents, but I had no social life to, to, to speak of. I used to hire movies for him, like stacks, to keep him busy because he, I mean, I, I knew he didn't have friends. He didn't have many friends. I didn't see anybody coming to see him, but he had friends at school, you know, I'm, I'm sure they would end up at school. And I would hire a lot of movies for him to watch. So I, you know, I suspect maybe that also contributed to that. But I'm sure he had the inner, inner talent, you know, an innate capacity and ability and talent and, and the desire to become a, a writer. <laughs> There's a woman from, from Vienna who runs the festival and she wanted me to bring the play to Vienna and she wanted me and I, and I thought, oh, this is a chance to actually do it with, white, with the white cast. But she said she wanted it as it was, you know, and I was very apprehensive about that. Until I met her, I had taken another play, Relativity, to Australia. So we, we met there. As we met, she talked to me and explained to me that uh, she likes the aspect of the layers, you know, of a play within the play, and the aspect of, for a change, uh, uh, blacks playing whites, because whites have played blacks before, you know, and and so it's it's an interesting shift that now in South Africa such, such a thing can happen, you know, and 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 unapologetically happen. When I get called Township Tarantino, then I have a problem. Because the reason I have a problem with the label also is because then Tarantino is sometimes used carelessly or classified carelessly as Mr. Violence and stuff. And this is where the label to me comes in, you know, which I have a problem. I have a problem with if, if, it, if it were about I think the creative part of Tarantino, then maybe I could accept it a bit or even be humbled by it, but uh, at the moment I reject it. Yeah. But then I think he's our own, but I think from a media point of view, you know, it's really, it's really uh, uh, trying to get the hype, trying to get people to come and see the work, but he's our own. And he could, 
You could possibly get him there, but I think he's his own, he's his own man. When I wanted to apologize, sometimes I confronted her, you know, about having abandoned me and whatever, and also, and then she would, uh, she would always say, the, the past is, because she talks very slow, the past is the past, and whatever. And this is what gets me angry, because, and, and I'm thinking, you know, why, why, why? For this many years that she hasn't been here, what, what does she think I've been coping, you know? Uh, uh, uh. Hey, yeah, she makes me very angry. I played many roles in his life as a counselor, as a teacher, and as an aunt. And of course, as a friend, I made myself available uh, to him as a, a friend. We laugh and talk. He, tr he laughs about what I say all the time. Because uh, in him, I, I wanted him to just see life as it comes and not to get stuck with pain and not get stuck with whatever has happened to him. I, I did not think what happened to him is tragic. I don't. But I, uh, what I know is, is that kids, when they grow up, they definitely need their parents. They need to be close to their parents. And, and that, that helps with emotional instability or emotional stability. As a kid, uh, like when she came, when she came when I was 14, so. Uh, uh, when she came, I had always asked her about uh, uh, my, my father. At the time, I used to care, you know, like now I don't care. But then when she came to the theater, she didn't come to a show. She came to, to here, to the state theater, you know. Uh, she, she left a letter for me. The, 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 in the letter, she was telling me who my father is and whatever. But uh, at this point, I, I didn't really care anymore who he was. I remember as a kid, it used to bother me. But, but now I don't care anymore. I, I read her letter, you know, but I didn't investigate it beyond, beyond that. Uh, so, yeah. But every time we've met, I've, I've always ended up in, in disaster, you know. And this is where sometimes you have miserable uh, times in your life, especially when you see even actors that you work with, uh, with their families and stuff, and you're thinking, I, I, I don't have a direct family, you know? So, like, I mean, there's my aunt, you know, as much as I like her, uh, uh, but she, she, I think she, because she, hey, she, she grew up differently and, and sees things differently than I see them, you know, like, like even talking about family now, where to her we must only say good things, and I, and I, I don't necessarily believe that. And I am dead, as dead I may well be. And I... We, we wrote until we didn't have an end. We thought, wow, how is this thing going to end? And he said, hey, I'm going to give this monologue a best shot, OK? I said, yeah. And then he calls me one minute and said, OK, I think I've got it. I've got this monologue. I said, wow, all right. We'll have to see it, you know? Obviously, uh, but how are you going to end it as a concept, you know? And it was a big problem. But then one day, I, I, I remembered that, you know, 
this thing is frustrating, this process of having black actors, it shouldn't be in this country. You know, I thought, no, this would be a nice way actually to end the play with my own frustration, you know? So, because at that point, I just felt, fuck this motherfuckers, you know? And, and at the same time, this is what we put in their play. <laughs> I think Paul is the one that put me really through it because we had to do line by line and he, he being not a, an actor per se, but he was, the way he was passionate, I could see it from him. He was acting it out for me. This is how you should run the lines, this is how they should flow, and this is how the anger should come out, this is how the frustration should come out. So from, from that point up, I think I, I really went went into it and, and tried and, and 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 did it to my to my best. So so we opened with with that uh, uh, at the festival, and then yeah, and then you know there were suddenly people feeling uh, racist. There were suddenly people feeling. Uh, 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 it's a crop up that didn't get white actors, but then it meant the play was working. For me, I thought, wow, it was working because you have uh, people celebrate, you have people stamping and screaming and thinking, wow, it's about time we say such things. What I didn't anticipate was that we would we'd be called racist because of that, you know? And, and I think the main reason we were called racist is because of how blacks reacted there. So it's like we are inciting people to, to hate, you know? And so which I think that's not the point. You know, and, and, and so, but it depressed me quite a lot. And after that, I didn't even want to see the play. You know, I was just angry with, with the whole process, angry even with the country that, you know, one can express themselves. You know, they have to be called racist and whatever. You know, whites always say we are too quick to pull the racial card in argument and that we blame apartheid too much instead of moving on with our lives. Then why are we unable to make this play as it's supposed to be made with an integrated cast? Why is it always us who have to preach racial tolerance? Why is it always us who's supposed to be their friends? We move next door to their houses and they tell us that we are too loud. We make noise as we talk. As, we are, as if we are bloody fucking monkeys that don't deserve to live in suburbs. That's all that we are to them. Nothing but fucking animals. Fuck this shit, man. You know, if one black person is a criminal, then all black people are criminals. Fuck this motherfuckers, man. Why do we always have to prove ourselves to them? Fuck them. Fuck this shit, man. Fuck white people. Fuck this motherfuckers. You know, like a lot of people were surprised why we even want to put importance on that speech because as they followed their play, it, it seems like a log logical conclusion of the problem that is in the Reazavo. No, I don't, I don't think he's a racist. It's just, he might be just an agent of, 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 of the truth, you know. Uh, he's an observer, he writes what he sees, and then, yeah, but it's, I don't think he's racist, yeah. You are not the best. The best is in the summit. Do you know the summit nightclub, Wena? I have been to summit and I know the best, eh? Yeah. Well, then why don't you fuck off to the summit then, huh? What the fuck are you doing with me then? Hey, Wena, don't come in here. Hey, don't you me, fucking yeah. touch Doesn't me. mean because you're white, then you're better, eh? Yeah. I'm paying you, am I not? Or is my money not good enough just because I'm black, eh? Yeah. Hey, hey, look yeah. here. There's no fucking way that you're getting into these pants for 30 bucks, all right? So just fuck hey, off, Hey, Wena, man. don't tell me to fuck off. Fuck off, fuck on pizza, <laughs> yeah? Apartheid is no longer there, Wena. <laughs> don't tell me to fuck off in my own fucking car. Why should I even be paying you? Why should I be fucking you for free when I? Your father is just a labor mother. Why should I pay just to have sex with you? Stay out of this, white man. What? You want to come and protect it? Come and try. Come and try, you white man. I want to go like you. Get off me! Get off me! You piece of shit! You see, like when I watch Clockwork Orange. 
The most interesting thing for me about it is that when you look at it, you think initial. Let's say, for example, we didn't know that it was done by Kubri, you know, which also qualifies it as like a work of art because we know it's done by him. But uh, assuming that it's not done by him, then when you watch it, then what you see is shock tactics. But then when you bring Kubrick into the issue, then you see examination through uh, a profound something. So what happens also with the stuff that I do is almost that picture. You know, it's like, for me, I like to think of them as profound, but the audience sometimes sees shock tactics because, you know, there's no Kubrick to speak of. Sometimes when you said things are very well, uh, I'd like to think then the result be, does become shock. And you examine a certain aspect which is gruesome, say violence, very well, then it does a shock at the end of the day. But I wouldn't call it shock tactics, you know? Some of the scenes that I try to do which have violence, I try to plan them to be beautiful so that there's a contrasting thing going on in the audience's mind. They are not sure whether to enjoy the visuals or, you know, that irony of not, not being able to actually be dis completely disgusted by the visuals you are seeing. Okay. Hurry up, boom. Get up, boom. Get up. One step, then, yes. Then, 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 go. Yeah. Oh, he can go days and days without sleeping if he's working on a certain production. He can't go there unless if he has researched it. And then he, he want, always wants to do his best with his work. And I think so far he's, he's one of the best uh, directors that I've worked under and, and one of uh, the closest friends I've, I've had. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's crazy, you know, like, um, he's crazy in a sense, you know, because he's really, like, passionate about his work and, and he, he really loves what he do. I think that's the most important thing that I admire about him. And also, he has the love of the cinema. And, you know, I also love cinema. So it's, it's those things, like, we kind of, like, click in a different way, but most of the stuff I was taught by him. It was very stressful as we left. As we left, we didn't even do a, a, a run of the place. Some of the scenes were still not blocked as we left, and which was a huge problem because we only had two days in Vienna before we opened. When we got there, they wanted subtitles also, and we couldn't run the play for them. So I had two rears, and then they were very, and they were very angry. I pushed the actors there. Some of them were not very happy with me. I pushed them very hard. But what I like about the experience uh, 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 was that initially they thought we were just bullshitting or, you know, especially the Vienna people, the crew there. <laughs> They 
was a shift after they saw the play and opening night. There was a huge shift. There was such a, a huge shift. They shot, well, we were not ready with anything before then, and they thought we were just going to do a horrible play. But I think they saw a play which is not horrible. I want to say thank you very, very, very much for the extremely hard work you have been doing the last days. I know it was really tough, and uh, I thought you really did a great job. Because you managed to really be there in the moment and, and bring it all together in the last second, but then it was all there. Like, for example, if I'm writing a, 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 a sex scene, it's almost that real for me. It's almost that real. And it's almost that orgasmic and real as I write it. And sometimes I even think that you know, reality sometimes you can do without it because when you write a script, you actually are living it. And so this is how I use it sometimes because I get lost in it. And, and you. I mean, even if it's a painful thing, it's almost cathartic as, even as you really go through, through the pain. I think that him being an introvert has actually helped him to really discover other people's works, other people. It gave him a chance, rather than, a chance, rather than being out there in the street or at the party, he's probably watching television until morning, he's reading, trying to read this book, he's going through the reviews of New York Times. When, when we grew up, we grew up uh, uh, not really very close to people per se. You escape into movies and go to the cinema and spend most of his time in the cinema. I think it's, 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 it's like uh, when, when you say one, when you go deep into books and films and learn about certain countries and what, what, what. It's as good as if you have been to those countries when, when actually what you did was just read and have a more in-depth knowledge about uh, certain things. Yeah. I would like my work to... Uh, the problem is that the, I, I don't really have, I know how to put it in one statement or one word, you know, but I, I, I want uh, people to be affected by my work in a, in a certain way, depending on what it is at that point, you know? And I want it to be important. I, I don't want people to say, oh, yeah, oh, so I think that's what I would want uh, the work to to do to people, you know, to really affect them so that they don't forget about it. Everybody loves his work. Every, his peers love his work. 
we love his work. We we just, I mean, his cousins and all the, the community loves his work. People go to his shows. People want to see his shows. People want me to tell them, and they, when they see adverts, they tell me about it. Have you seen Pomelo? Have you seen Pauli on TV? Have you seen? They're so excited about him. And you know, they know him as a very quiet little boy who grew up being introverted. Yeah. Because I missed a, a whole stage, a adolescent stage of my life, because at home they didn't want us to play outside the yard, you know, so I, I really didn't have... You know when kids try out stuff, when kids try to talk to girls, kids try... I never had any, any of those games and, and practices. So even today, like, some of the things uh, people who talk to girls about really do not interest me. And sometimes when I have to talk to uh, uh, some, some a woman or whatever, it, it, it scares me. It scares me quite a lot. And, um, and when I think in retrospect why it scares me, I don't know why. And then when I have to write about that incident, then it's a relief. It's as if I've done it myself, you know? So, so yeah. Uh, and leave that romantic notion of the artists, the visual artists who, who would sleep with all the people they paint. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, it's horrible. It's empty. It's not a holiday My life's like a summer way Oh, I know This love don't last I waited patiently And this is what I get Emotional Failing me My whole wide world is giving me I'm not so free To express myself The woman in me Whoa, 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 don't fall away. 